Does anyone know what shellac and Victrolac are? You know, who know? Tell us, Mr. Audio. In 1888, when Emil Berliner and Eldridge Johnson of the Victor Talking Machine Company first made flat records as opposed to the Edison cylinders, their discs were hard rubber material. However, eventually 78 RPM discs were made of shellac, which was very abrasive since it contained micropulverized rock. Shellac records were as hard on needles as the needles were on the shellac, and both discs and needles wore out very quickly. When electrical recording began in 1925, these new discs sounded better at 33 and a third RPM than the non-electrically recorded discs sounded at 78. However, the record companies decided not to introduce a new format, since everyone already owned 78 RPM players. Western Electric did, however, use the 33 and a third speed for their Vitaphone system for movies, since the equipment was very specialized. These discs, as with all commercial records at that time, were shellac and not very durable. The Vitaphone discs were only supposed to be played 20 times before they were to be discarded. Victor was purchased by RCA in 1929 and became RCA Victor. In 1931, they introduced a new material they called Victrolac. They planned to release records in this new material, which was lighter, more flexible, and much less abrasive than shellac. Victrolac was similar to modern vinyl, and the records were to be at 33 and a third. Again, since most consumers were reluctant to buy expensive new record players, it was a commercial failure. It wasn't until the V-Disc program that sent records overseas to the troops during World War II that vinyl materials started to be used, since 80% of the shellac records were being broken in transit. Thanks, Mr. Audio. For more interesting facts about sound, visit Mr. Audio at soundimages.com.